Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ray. I am a detransition male, and today I'm going to be debunking the claim that trans lesbians have <laughs> uh, have lady brains. Because this is the most common theory that you hear to explain gender identity ideology, which is that trans women are born with a um, subconscious mismatched gender identity that stems from an underlying neurological intersex conditions such that they say, well, my my brain is female, but my body is male. And because I can't change the brain, I'm going to change the body. That's the most common explanation. The alternative explanation based on Blanchardian typology is that there's actually different kinds of um, gender dysphoria in these uh, trans-identified males. Some of that gender dysphoria comes from um, issues dealing with the natural effemacy of being a homosexual, effeminate uh, gay man. And then the other type of gender dysphoria comes from essentially an inverted form of heterosexuality. And this distinction is called the Blanchardian two-type typology. So I'm actually going to look at some research um, from Dr. James Cantor New MRI studies support the Blanchard typology of male to female transsexualism. Um, th this study, th this uh, um, paper is actually a little bit old. It goes back to 2011, but I think it's still um, relevant and not a lot of people are talking about this, but I think it needs to be discussed because uh, this claim that trans women have neurological intersex female shifted brains, there, there's just not a lot of good science to support that hypothesis. And the Blanchardian typology is a better explanation of what's going on. So um, Blanchard postulated, uh, so, so Ray Blanchard was the one who came up with the theory of, of autogynophilia and came up with this two-type typology between the homosexual transsexuals and the autogynophilic transsexuals. In 2008, um, Blanchard postulated that the brains of homosexual and heterosexual male to female transsexuals probably differ from the brains of typical heterosexual men, but in different ways. In homosexual male to female transsexuals, the difference does, does involve sex dimorphic structures and the nature of the difference is a shift in the female typical direction. If there is any neuroanatomic intersexuality, it is in the homosexual group. In heterosexual male to female transsexuals, the difference may not involve sex dimorphic structures at all, and the nature of the structural difference is not necessarily among the male female dimension. Okay, so let me break this down. So, what Blanchard is uh, uh, hypothesizing is that the neurological intersex female brain shift is true, but it's only true for the homosexual transsexuals, AKA the, the, the transsexual women who are exclusively attracted to men. And, and the hypothesis is that in the transsexual women who are asexual, bisexual, or heterosexual, AKA attracted to uh, women, or you have some attraction to, 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 to women, in, in those trans women, you're not going to see a a, uh, a a a female typical brain shift, which is not to say that you won't see any um, brain di differences at all compared to a regular heterosexual men. It's just that that those brain differences are not going to be along that uh, female male dimorphic um, shifting dimension. You might see some other type of brain difference. So it's not to say that there's no underlying neurological basis for um, the gender dysphoria in so-called trans lesbians or the heterosexual um, trans women, the trans women who are attracted to women. It's just that that brain difference is not going to be along this male-female shift. So this idea that um, you know trans lesbians are born in the wrong body because they have female brains, that they have lady brains, that's not borne out. And this is uh, makes sense because among the so-called trans lesbians, typically they don't show. Um, yeah. Okay. So let me just uh, read Cantor because Cantor explains it better. He, um, 
Blanchard's prediction follows from studies that have repeatedly shown that homosexual male to female transsexuals are female shifted in multiple sexually dimorphic characteristics, whereas the heterosexual male to female transsexuals, aka trans lesbians or you know bisexual um, tr tr trans women, are, are not. For example, homosexual male to female transsexuals are sexually attracted to natal males, express greater interest in female typical activities, even in childhood, and are naturally effeminate in mannerism. In contrast, heterosexual male to female transsexuals are indistinguishable from non transsexual natal males on these variables. Um, the heterosexual transsexuals are still distinct from typical males in other ways, however, such as by manifesting autogonophilia, the, the erotic interest in or sexual arousal in response to being or seeming female. So this explains why there are so many trans women who are attracted to women, the trans women attracted to women, when they come out as trans, a lot of people say, Oh, there were no signs. I would have never guessed because these trans women, they spend their whole lives with everyone just thinking that they're more or less regular heterosexual men who have often, you know, male typical interests like in computer engineering or, you know, being nerdy and video games and Dungeons and Dragons and, you know, all these sort of like typical you know, and they sort of have have the interest in like the in the, the like quantitative fields. Um, and they don't show signs of natural effeminacy in young age, except with this interest in um, the sort of embodiment of um, the female form um, that derives from this underlying inverted heterosexuality. So um, Cantor goes on to say, the consistent detection of cross-sex features among homosexual male to female transsexuals, but not among he heterosexual male to female female transsexuals led Blanchard to predict that the cross-sex pattern would also emerge at the level of brain anatomy and be limited to the homosexual male to female transsexuals. That prediction now appears to be the case with Rometty et al. supporting his prediction for, for the homosexual transsexuals and Savick and Arver for the heterosexual um, tr transsexuals. Um, so the Rometty team used an MRI technique called diffusion tensor imaging to compare homosexual male to female transsexuals with non-transsexual heter 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 heterosexual control males and with non-transsexual heterosexual control females. They contrasted the male controls with the female controls to identify the sex dimorphic portions of the brain and then contrasted the homosexual transsexuals with each of the control groups on the dimorphic brain region so identified. The initial contrast identified six sex dimorphic brain regions. The homosexual transsexual sample was intermediate in vol volume on all six brain structures, significantly different from the male controls on five of the six and significantly different from the female controls on all six. That is, these male to female transsexuals were different from the control males shifted towards the female direction on all parameters. So in other words, with the homosexual transsexuals, AKA the transsexual women who are exclusively attracted to men and have always been exclusively attracted to men from a young age and showed natural signs of, of, of effeminacy from a young age and showing early onset gender dysphoria in childhood, early onset, um, gender incongruence in this cohort of trans women, you do see this um, brain shifting towards the female spectrum uh, in these sexually dimorphic brain regions, which supports that sort of like in, 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 in intersex theory. However, Savick and Arver applied anatomical MRIs with an analogous research design, identifying the sex dimorphic portions of the brain and contrasting um, a uh, heterosexual transsexual sample with each control sample on the sex dimorphic brain regions. Of the eight brain regions that distinguish male from female brains, the heterosexual transsexual sample differed from the male controls on none. Let me repeat that. Of the eight brain regions that distinguish male, male from female brains, the heterosexual transsexual sample differed from the male controls on none. In other words, Trans lesbians do not have lady brains. <laughs> they don't have female brains, which makes sense because they don't show female typical um, behavioral patterns in the young age. Um, okay, so of the four brain regions that distinguish these heterosexual transsexuals from the male controls, sex dimorphism was present in none. 
Um, as Savick and Arbor themselves emphasized, contrary to the primary hypothesis, no sex atypical features with signs of feminization were detected in the transsexual group. The present study does not support the dogma that male to female transsexuals have atypical sex dimorphism in the brain, although that statement sh should have been restricted to refer to heterosexual male to female tr transsexuals only. Also meriting emphasis is that although these data uh, disconfirm that the heterosexual type has a feminized brain pattern, the data nonetheless confirm that heterosexual transsexuals have a brain structure distinct from that of typical non-transsexual persons. Their gender identity is not a transient or ephemeral characteristic, but likely innate and immutable characteristic emerging from their particular brain structure. So this is important. This shows that there actually is a difference between the heterosexual um, tr trans women, aka the trans lesbians, the, the trans women who, who are attracted to women, and the non-transsexual regular heterosexual males. So there does seem to be an underlying neurological basis for um, this transsexuality in the heterosexual type. However, the postulation is that... Um, this is a result of the inversion of heterosexuality, aka auto auto autogynophilia. So it's the autogynophilia that distinguishes them from regular heterosexual males, and it's not having this, you know, mismatch gender identity due to having a you know female brains or whatever. So, long story short, um, the research supports the idea that. Um, the Blanchard typology has its basis in neurological underpinnings. So this does support the idea that um, there is a neurological underpinning to transsexuality. In the homosexual case, it's due to these sexually dimorphic female brain shifts that come from your homosexuality. And in the autogynophilic case, you do see this innate brain structure, but the hypothesis is that th that innate brain structure that differs from the re regular heterosexual males it's this inversion mechanism. Somehow, some way or another, the heterosexuality gets inverted. And whatever mechanism is doing that inversion, the hypothesis is that that is an innate um, sexual difference or has some degree of innateness, which is not to say that it can't be influenced by the environment or you know learning or your you know life history or whatever. It's just that there does seem to be some underlying basis to autogynophilia. Um, so... Okay, long story short, um, <laughs> the trans lesbians do not have la lady brains and that um, brain research is more supported by the Blanchardian typology that distinguishes between the homosexual type and the, um, and the autogynophilic type. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye-bye.